Major League Baseball is vowing to make a historic financial pledge to ensure black Americans are represented on and off the field in years to come. The organization says it will commit $150 million over 10 years to help with diversity initiatives. Baseball Commissioner Rob Manfred called the called it the sport's largest charitable contribution. Now it comes as the MLB's All-Star Game gets underway in Denver tonight. It will be an unusually political one this year after the organization pulled the game from Atlanta due to Georgia's controversial new voting law, which is getting criticized for being too restrictive. So for more on this, we want to bring in Colorado Secretary of State, Jenna Griswold. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, you know, when MLB uh, decided to pull the All-Star game from uh, the Atlanta area, some people said, oh, you know, you're, what you're really doing is you're hurting the people of Atlanta. You're hurting the businesses in the area. I want to ask you, uh, you know, what you think of this. What was moving the MLB All-Star game to Denver the right move? Well, good morning. Thank you for having me on. Uh, here in Colorado, we're really excited to have the All-Star Game, um, but it does come to us it, from an, an unfortunate set of circumstances. Uh, Georgia decided to pass a, a big voter suppression package um, when its elections are already one of the hardest in the nation in which to participate. Um, and, you know, I, I really commend the MLB for standing up for democracy and standing up for American voters. Of course, we never want to see a state suppress its voters, but that's what we're seeing across the country. And I think it's imperative for uh, businesses and Americans to really pay attention and do whatever they can uh, to protect our democracy and the right to vote. Uh, and that includes moving the all-star game out of Atlanta to Denver. Um, this last election was historic in many ways, particularly because of the way um, the pandemic impacted how we vote. And a lot of states moved to make it uh, easier for people to vote uh, who were uncomfortable about showing up in crowded spaces indoors. How do voting laws in your state compare to Georgia's? Well, first and foremost, Colorado is considered the gold standard of our nation's elections. Uh, we have vote by mail for all weeks of early voting, same day and automatic voter registration, and the results speak for themselves. We have the highest percentage of eligible people registered uh, and just had the second highest turnout. Uh, here in Colorado, our average wait time, if you want to vote in person, is seven minutes. Uh, I think the nation should be continuously shocked of images out of Georgia of eight-hour long lines, 10-hour long lines, and that's before they've just made it harder to vote. Uh, so the key difference here is we send a mail ballot to every registered voter. voter. In Georgia, they don't. We believe that all voters, regardless of the color of their skin, their zip code, uh, or the amount of money in their bank account, should have access to safe and secure elections. In Georgia, especially with the new voter uh, suppression package, they are making it harder to vote, harder to get a mail ballot, harder to return that ballot, uh, and targeting communities of color. And, and one thing that we do know is that even with the expansion of access to voting um, during the last election, there were no confirmed reports of any sort of widespread fraud. Still, there's a report uh, from The Washington Post that found that at least one third of GOP congressional candidates who have filed initial paperwork with the Federal Election Commission have questioned the 2020 presidential election results. These are people who are, are trying to get involved in politics. What do you make of this? Well, it's, it's a, a sad time for our country, and, and we need to go back to the ideal that regardless if you're a Republican candidate or official or Democratic candidate or, or official, that you believe in the country and the country comes first. But what we're seeing on the right is uh, questioning without any facts or reason uh, the 2020 election, uh, that that questioning is becoming a litmus test. Um, and we have to make sure we do not allow elect people who do not believe in democracy to represent us in the halls of Congress uh, as secretaries of state or governors. Um, and Anne-Marie, you, you hit the nail right on the head. Last year, not only was considered uh, one of the, the best elections in America's history with record turnout among both Democrats and Republicans, it was also the safest election in America's history. Um, and that has been confirmed by A.G. Barr, uh, the leaders of CISA, the leaders of the U.S. Department of Homeland Security under President Trump. 
various Republican attorney generals and, and U.S. attorneys. Um, so what we're really seeing is a movement by some Republican candidates and elected officials to gaslight the American public for their own political power, uh, to suppress our freedoms, our right to vote, to try to help themselves and their party. Uh, it's, it's alarming. Uh, we are at an urgent time, and what is happening is extremely un-American. So we need everybody's hands on deck uh, to make sure that we are fighting for our freedom to vote across this nation. You have called secretaries of state defenders of democracy. Can you talk to us about just, just how crucial the election of these secretaries in 2022 is for the elections in 2024? It is beyond crucial. We are seeing uh, a coordinated effort to suppress the vote and erode democracy uh, that is multifaceted across the nation. It includes over 400 bills to suppress the vote in 47 states, uh, fake audits uh, to erode confidence. As you mentioned, um, many uh, people running for Congress who say they do not believe in the 2020 election results. Um, so ultimately, we need people uh, elected to office and uh, running our state's elections who believe in elections. Um, we are seeing in battleground states many uh, Republican candidates who are either at the insurrection or who have been the drafters of these voter suppression packages. So we need to make sure that as Americans decide who becomes their secretary of state in 2022, that that person who will ultimately run the elections believes in free and fair elections. So democracy will be on the ballot in 2022. Um, uh, and secretaries of state who believe in truth and fact will be running and, and hopefully will be elected. So you're also the chair of the Democratic Association of Secretaries of State. How is the organization ramping up efforts to ensure Democrats uh, maintain these positions? Um, I guess it's not just Democrats, though, but, you know, anyone who is in like you say, sort of in, in favor of truth versus conspiracy theories. Democratic secretaries of state believe that the American people should be who chooses the, 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 the deciding factor on who becomes the president, mm -hmm. the leaders in the Senate, and the leaders in our states. Um, so we are focused on making sure that we get people elected who believe in democracy. We're also fighting day and night to stop the voter suppression across this nation. Um, so we are all in. Uh, we believe that we are at an urgency point in, in our nation's history. Um, um, we're also calling on the U.S. Senate to pass safeguards, um, whether it be the For the People's Act or a, a combination of, of voting reforms, uh, to ensure that our democracy remains intact. But short of that, if the Senate fails to act, it's secretaries of state who will be protecting the right to vote. Um, so, you know, we are really looking towards 2022. Um, unfortunately, the attacks on our elections are, are not dissipating. They're getting worse. Um, so we really need to have people there to defend democracy in the states and that secretary of state. Uh, just a quick question before we let you go. You know, we have been talking about the uh, first walkout and then flyout of the uh, Texas Democrats in order to avoid voting on uh, some new legislation, two new bills that would restrict voting in Texas. Just kind of your gut reaction. What's your take on what the lawmakers there did? I think they're being brave and are meeting the urgency of the time. Um, we've already seen comprehensive voter suppression packages pass in Georgia, Florida, um, laws in Montana, Iowa, and other states across the nation. Uh, and Texas is poised to pass one of the worst voter suppression packages that target voters of color, uh, specifically Latino voters and black voters, uh, without any reason. Um, so I, I really commend uh, the Democratic legislators for walking out and and preserving Texans' freedom to vote and choose their elected officials. Um, and I, I just think it's egregious that state Republicans are trying to tilt future elections in their favor by suppressing the vote of Texan voters. All right, Secretary Jenna Griswold, thank you very much. Thank you for having me.